what exactly is Russian formalism? Russian formalism or East European formalism is a school of literary criticism and literary theory that originated in Moscow, that is the Moscow linguistic circle, and St. Petersburg in the 1920s. Among the leading representatives of the movement were Boris Eichenbaum, Viktor Sholovsky, and Roman Jakobson. When this critical mode was suppressed by Stalinist Russia in the early 1930s, the center of the formalist study of literature moved to Czechoslovakia, where it was continued especially by members of the Prague Linguistic Circle, which included Roman Jakobson, Jan Mukarovsky and René Wilk. A comprehensive and influential formalist essay is Roman Jakobson's Linguistics and Poetics, which is very important and is included in his Language and Literature published in 1987. Russian formalists emphasized the autonomous nature of literature and insisted that the proper study of literature lay and neither in a reflection of the life of its author nor in the historical or cultural milieu in which it was created. They believed that literature was essentially a linguistic phenomenon and placed literature at the center, relegating all related matters to the margin. They gave importance to the role of the metaphor and other linguistic devices. It is in this sense that Russian formalism can be seen as a forerunner to structuralism. At first, opponents of the movement applied the term formalism derogatorily because of its focus on the formal patterns and technical devices of literature to the exclusion of its subject matter and social values. Later, however, it became a neutral designation. According to formalists, human context in literature did not possess any significance in defining what was literary about the text. The formalists collapsed the distinction between form and content. They deliberately neglected the historical, sociological, biographical or psychological dimension of literary discourse. According to them, the writer was of negligible importance. Explanations which base their arguments on the spirit intuition, imagination, or genius of the poet were rejected. They propagated an intrinsic approach which regards a work of art as an independent entity. A work of literature is related to all literature in general and not to its author or his personality. There is only poetry and literature. There are no poets or literary figures. The object of literary science is an authorless literariness. All the emphasis is on the literariness of the formal devices of a text such as phonetic structures, rhythm, rhyme, meter, and other elements which contribute to deviations in language. For example, let us look at Viktor Sholovsky. Viktor Sholovsky summarizes this attitude in his definition of literature as the sum total of all the stylistic devices employed in it. He refuted the idea that literature is a social or political product. Instead, literature is a personal expression of an author's world vision expressed by means of images and symbols. Art is a sum of literary and artistic devices that the artist manipulates to craft his work. Formalism views literature primarily as a specialized mode of language and proposes a fundamental opposition between the literary or poetical use of language and the ordinary. The central function of ordinary language or the practical use of language is to communicate a message or information by references to the world existing outside of language. In contrast, literary language is focused. Its function is not to convey information by making extrinsic references but to offer the reader a special mode of experience by drawing attention to its own formal features, that is, to the qualities and internal relations of the linguistic signs themselves that formalists called literariness. For example, 
as Roman Jacobson wrote in 1921, the object of study in literary science is not literature but literariness. I'm repeating once again that Roman Jacobson in 1921 had remarked that the object of study in literary science is not literature but literariness. That is what makes a given work a literary work and literariness is to be studied by focusing on the artistic devices used in the work. The Russian formalists use the term deformation in a positive sense. It suggests the changes imposed on the material of the poem and the resultant effects. These include all the poetic devices and artistic instruments which help in the creation of aesthetic effects. Art, according to the Russian formalists, defamiliarizes. Now, defamiliarization is a very important concept in Russian, formal, in Russian formalism. So, art, according to the Russian formalists, defamiliarizes things which have become habitual. So, defamiliarization is the opposite of automatization. The literariness of a work, as Jean Mukarovsky described it, consists in the maximum of foregrounding of the utterance that is the foregrounding of the act of expression the act of speech itself the referential aspect and the logical connections in language is backgrounded in poetry the primary aim of literature is thus foregrounding its linguistic medium as victor shalovsky put it into a defamiliarizing method that is, by disrupting the modes of ordinary linguistic discourse, literature makes strange the world of everyday perception and renews the reader's lost capacity for fresh sensation. Sholovsky's concept of ostraneni or defamiliarization is the technique of art that makes us see the strange aspects in the familiar and the unusual in the ordinary things of life. The demands of the normal existence blunt our perception of things and they become to a great extent automatized or normalized. Automatized is the word that the Russian formalists used. The purpose of a work of art is to change our mode of perception from the automatic and practical to the artistic. In 1917, Viktor Sholovsky wrote his famous art as technique where he makes it clear he says that the technique of art is to make objects unfamiliar and to make forms difficult to increase the difficulty and length of perception because the process of perception is an aesthetic end in itself and must be prolonged art is a way of experiencing the artfulness of an object the object is not important. Sometimes the process of perception is delayed or prolonged, which is called a retardation. The formalists were interested less in the perception themselves and more in the nature of the devices which produced the effect of defamiliarization. In the Biographia Literaria, for example, Coleridge had described the prime merit of a literary genius to be the representation of familiar objects so as to evoke freshness of sensation. But whereas the romantic critic had stressed the author's ability to express a fresh mode of experiencing the world, the formalist stresses the function of purely literary devices to produce the effect of freshness in the reader's experience of a literary work. To the formalists, what distinguishes a literary work from a non-literary work is not the subject matter or content, but the mode of presentation. This emphasis on the actual process of presentation is called laying bare one's technique. So the foregrounded properties or artistic devices which a strange poetic language are often described as deviations from ordinary language. They consist primarily in patterns in the sound and syntax of poetic language, including patterns in speech sounds, grammatical constructions, rhythm, rhyme, meter, alliteration, and stanza forms. 
prominent recurrence of keywords or images also constitutes deviation. These features of poetry are not regarded as simple adornments of the meaning but as a reorganization of language on the semantic, phonic and syntactic levels. Shkolovsky defined a work as a sum total of all stylistic devices employed in it. Now, Russian formalists have also made influential contributions to the theory of prose fiction. With respect to this genre, the central formalist distinction is that between the story, the, that is the simple enumeration of a chronological sequence of events, and a plot. This is the main distinction between the story and the plot. The Russian formalists stress that while story or what they call fabula is merely the chronological sequence of events, the raw material awaiting the organizing hand of the writer, plot or the sujet, is the order of presentation in the narration which is strictly literary. Fabula is the action itself, while fabula is how the reader learns of the action. Sujet creates defamiliarization effects upon fabula. The plot of Tristram Shandy, for instance, is not merely an arrangement of story incidents, but also all the devices used to interrupt and delay the narration. By frustrating familiar plot arrangement, Stern draws attention to plotting itself as a literary object. The writer of prose fiction uses his raw material, rearranges it and gives it a shape in such a manner as to create a literary object out of it. The process involves not a direct chronological or literal representation of the material, but selection, concealment, focalization, distancing and taking up different points of view, all of which go to create the object. Wayne C. Booth, Sevetan Todorov, Jakobson, Shkolovsky and others have made contributions to the analysis and understanding of prose fiction using these concepts. The formalists often linked plot with the notion of defamiliarization. The plot prevents us from regarding the incidents as typical and familiar. An author transforms the raw material of the story into a literary plot by the use of devices that violate the sequence and deform and defamiliarize the story elements. The effect is to foreground the narrative medium and devices themselves and in this way to disrupt and refresh what had been our standard responses to the subject matter. The formalists look upon works, ideas, themes, references to reality as merely the eternal excuse required to justify the use of formal devices. This dependence on external non-literary assumptions is called motivation. According to Shilovsky, Tristram Shandy is remarkable for being totally without motivation. The novel is entirely made up of formal devices which are bad. Russian formalism's concepts of defamiliarization and laying bare are notions which influenced Bertolt Brecht's famous alienation effect, like or, or what he called the Verfremdung's effect. Like the Russian theoreticians, Brecht was concerned with ways of demonstrating the artificiality of literary discourse. He felt that to consider literature as a natural representation of reality would be deceitful and politically uh, regressive. He therefore rejected realism and embraced modernism. He demanded that authors as well as the audience should maintain a critical distance from the play. Therefore, he brought in alienating elements to remind the spectators of the artificial and illusory nature of a theatrical performance. The main influence of Russian and Czech formalism on Anglo-American criticism has been on the development of stylistics and of narratology. Roman Jakobson and Sevetan Todorov have been influential in introducing formalist concepts and methods into French structuralism. This movement had its impact on other movements such as structuralism.